I have some new boards. Yay! These boards are made by PCBWay. Thank you very much, PCBWay. And these boards I have made for my camera slider jig project. I haven't given it a proper name yet. But basically it's a reused 3D printer. My old Creality CR10 failed and I could have fixed it. But I decided to reuse all the parts or most of the parts and turn it into a camera jig. Now the pan tilt head is originally designed by Isaac879 if I am correct. I just modified it a bit so it will fit my camera and I also want to modify it so it can focus and zoom. So for that I need five stepper motors and I decided to design my own stepper driver board. This board is designed for five stepper drivers and I am going to use the TMZ 2108 and then the version 2 board of this. And it's also designed to have five limit switches and these can be either just some normal regular limit switches or some Halifax sensors and each switch has a configurable pull up or pull down resistor and of course you can leave both of them off and just have no pull up or pull down. It's all driven by an ESP32. There's 5 volt also broken out for some extra peripherals. The unused IOs which are all strapping pins are also broken out. TPIO 16 and 17 are also broken out for an optional extra UART connection. There is an auto reset circuit which I messed up but you'll see that later. And the USB to serial is done by a CP2102 via USB-C. Now on the power side there is a 12 volt in, a fuse, a diode, pretty big diode because it's probably going to draw a lot of current. There's a 5 volt regulator and a 3 volt regulator, some indicator LEDs and there is a op amp. And this op amp is an LM358 and this op amp is a comparator. And this circuit is basically the circuit that is on an Arduino Uno which allows you to plug in an external power supply as well as the USB to either communicate with the USB32 in this case or just power it from 5 volt. Now of course the stepper motors all require 12 volt so these don't work but the USB section will still work from the USB. And you can leave both plugged in and it will prioritize the 12 volt over the USB and how that's working I'll explain later but for now I first need to solder the USB connector and the CP2102 because these are very fine pitch and I don't want to do that by hand but I have a trick for that. So what I'm going to do is use my technique of drizzling solder paste on the pads and then reflowing it with my hot air gun and for that I'm going to use some paste, let me put this away, some paste, some flux and I'm going to use the flux that binary bug gave me, let's see how this does and a bit of plastic, this is just some rolled up packing tape and I need some kind of applicator, these are actually used for prying open phones and, and things like that but I find these very useful for stirring paste in a small canister and the other thing I'm going to use is this cut of lead from a diode and I'm going to use that for picking up a little bit of paste and then applying it to the pads. So the first thing I need to do is grab a little bit of paste oh, this is tight, grab a little bit of paste and mix it, this is going to take a while I really don't need a lot. I think this is even too much. But we'll see. Just drizzle some flux on it. That's okay. 
and now it's time for some more mixing alright I think this is pretty well mixed now let's move over to the microscope and by the way I have a new way of mounting my AD 407 microscope and Scott Defpom Electronics I believe he commented on the review I did for this microscope and he said if you mount the ring of the microscope to the stand then you have a lot more working space and you can still oops there goes my light and you can still focus because the focus ring turns freely and because it's pretty well zoomed in you still have a decent amount of working area and it's still pretty sharp and you can see more of the board so I think this is a really good idea thank you very much Scott let's start drizzling some solder There we go. Now let's first first let's first place the USB connector. And let's get the CP2102 out. Pin 1 is the top left pin. And let's place this about right. And let's turn on the hot air gun. I'm going to start pretty high just to get everything warm. Try to get the board warm too. And just move around in little circus circus <laughs> in little circles ideally I would get straight down but I can't because the microscope's there so I have to do it at a bit of an angle it's always a good idea to have your tweezers in hand so you can nudge the chip if needed I may have used a bit too much flux see how it was dancing around that was all the flux that was evaporating oh, I moved it
Right, I think this is not bad. Shit. Now I do have to clean it up with my soldering iron a bit, but that's okay. And it was also to be expected. I'm going to use my very big tip for this and just drag along the edge. The same for the other edge. And the top edge. And this is a difficult angle for me. There we go. I might also touch the USB pins just to make those connections better as well. These are pretty well done. I can't see if there's a bridge underneath there. There might be. We'll have a closer look and see if there's any bridges. Those are all soldered. Let's have a look at the chip. That looks fine. The other side. Hmm. Maybe that third pin from the left could do with some touch up can't really see what I'm doing let's do it this way Yeah, that looks fine. Now very important, I need to solder the USB-C shield. Um, the last time I didn't do this, my USB connector just flew off and it didn't go as planned. So I'm going to do that now. Alright, they're on there. Let's clean the board a bit. Now, of course, I can't test everything, but I can check for shorts. So, first of all, ground and VBUS should not be shorted. Let's see, where's ground? This pad from the ESP32 is ground. And VBUS is over there. And, well, my multimeter is here on diode mode. And nothing. So that's a good thing. Do I need something else around this circuit for my computer to detect the CB201010? And I do. I need the fuse. And what else do I need? I think I also need a diode. Do I have a diode there? I don't know. So I do need the fuse and some resistors around that CP21010. So let me do those and I'll come back.
All right, I soldered most of the components needed for the CP2102 and then I realized that the short check I just did between VBUS and ground is only working for the circuit that is after this fuse because it goes VBUS, then the fuse and then the rest of the circuit. So when I checked for shorts, I was checking for shorts after that fuse. I wasn't checking for shorts on the USB connector itself because that was disconnected because the fuse wasn't there yet. So let's do that again. That works. And now between VBUS and ground there's still not a short but on one side of the fuse there is a connection. I'm not getting a good connection. And on the other side of the fuse there's also a connection. So that is good. And once I got on the realization train I realized I also am going to need the 3.3 volt regulator which means I also need the 5 volt regulator because VBUS is going to the 5 volt regulator and then the 3.3 volt regulator and then the CP2102. So I also need the whole power section of this circuit and I'm going to do that in the next video. For now you've seen how I solder service mount chips if I don't use a stencil. Um, if I can do it by hand I will do it by hand so I'm going to do everything else by hand but the fine pitch of the CB2102 and the USB-C connector is just too fine for me to do by hand. So that's it for this video. In the next video I hope to finish the power circuit and see if we can get a serial connection between my computer and the CP2102. Bye for now.